So here I have myself a little 1.2 horsepower Johnson Colt. Uh, these are pretty simple little motors, little single cylinder. So this video I'm basically just going to be kind of giving it a walkthrough and seeing uh, what it may or may not need and the overall condition of it. Now one nice thing about these motors and one poor design about my desk, when you mount an outboard on it, you're only really working on it from the back, getting to the front you kind of got to reach around here to get to. With these little guys not having reverse, just on and go, you can tilt the engine all the way around. So that's kind of handy because I can work on it with it just sitting there. So, you know, I can tilt it up, I can rotate it, and tilt it up. So it's pretty, pretty easy to get to everything on these things. That's one of the things I like about them. And also, it has as much power backwards as it does forward. Because again, you're just turning the entire thing around, not running the prop backwards. Uh, first thing I noticed with this engine, some rust on the little carrying handle, no big deal. That's pretty common with these things. The uh, main problem so far is the pull starter. It doesn't do anything anymore. So I'm gonna pull the hood off and we'll uh, see, you know, try to see what's wrong with it. We should have a screw back here that you can undo to drop the lower cover. It's missing, which I find is common on every one of these things. Um, this bottom cowl is held in with these two clips, one on each side. And this has this little slot here. I think somebody added this, probably to get to the clips, because they, they do a pretty good job of holding the bottom on. But, in theory... You can use those to get to the clips. Which doesn't really seem like it's working, but apparently it is. Yep, I don't think so. So I'm gonna pull the handle off. No big. Got our bottom cowls off now. So that's good. All right, as it turns out, I'm actually dumb handle nut was on there so all I would have had to do is put in a wrench in there and grab it oh well, whatever all right let's get this thing up um, we see a little bit of rust going on inside of there no big deal but I can turn the propeller and I can see the power head spinning so that gives me uh, gives me hope this thing might see life again uh, it looks pretty complete I don't see anything missing other than stuff I just took off yeah, well, that looks good. So, let's get this cover off. Looks like I got some bolts there, right there. Yeah, I'll probably just pull this one off and probably come out. Huh. Alright, well, let's start pulling hardware and we'll see how it does. All right, lower cowling is off. Front beauty piece kind of fell off with it. That's not a beauty piece, it's part of the air carb silencer. And uh, our pull starter is now removed. So now we get a clear view of our engine entirely. Uh, carburetor looks like it's got a new gasket installed on it. Maybe. Mind you, I'm just guessing, but you can see the, the brown. Usually you see that color in new kits. I think originals came with the black, but this is a newer motor, so it could have just been a design change. Alright, well, we can now get to the engine, so that's good. Let's put 
flip this thing back around. And we'll have a look at the pull starter. And I pulled the gas tank out. You can see the slot right there. That's where the spring should be. And you can kind of see it sticking out. So it's possible that's what's wrong with our pull starter. But you can also kind of see the spring inside of there. Well, hard to tell. Yeah, you can't see it. Well, anyway, moral of the story is it looks all kinds of rusted. And given how this is working, probably the case. Yeah, you see it sticking out now. So, uh, I think we probably just need to replace the spring. Yeah, there's a good shot of it. Not, not the worst spring I've ever seen, but definitely not the best. So, chances are we can get the pull starter working by replacing the spring. But, no reason to do that just yet. Because I want to see what the internals of this engine are like. So I'm going to pull the uh, rusty old spark plug on out of here. So, uh, we're going to need to change the spark plug and wire there. I think it's pretty done. Let's see if our spark plug runs out. Jeez. There we go. Easy. Getting the spark plug get back out of that socket. Not easy. All right, I have a compression tester. Um, if you've seen anybody else's videos ever, they always do a compression check. And also, if you've ever Googled anything about these motors, you see that everybody in the world out there recommends it. Uh, you can get these pretty cheap. Usually they're less than $30. They're handy on lawnmowers, engines, all kinds of stuff. So it's not like you're buying just a special outboard tool by getting a compression gauge. They come in handy for any engine, really. Uh, the only issue, really, with them is the newer engines use a smaller spark plug hole and not all of them come with an adapter. We'll explain more about that later. No, not today, but another video. Alright, this is a spark tester. It's not a spark gap tester, which is the recommended way to do it, but it'll give me a good idea if it's a cylinder is firing or not. Compression gauge is the zero, hit the button, nothing comes out, and spark tester is hooked up. So I'll get my test start rope and we'll see how this goes. So I rotated the camera to the top view. You can kind of get an idea of how I do this. I have a rope with a knot in it. Pretty straightforward on that. And you just kind of wrap it around there. It'll slip. It'll come off. But you want to get as much pulls as you can. Which apparently can be very many on this thing. Yeah, see it slipped off already? Fun, huh? This is where the pull starter working would come in handy. Today is not my day. Alright, this is this is a joke. This is not working. Yeah, that'll do it, right? Yeah, that's better. Ninety PSI, not bad. You can probably see the spark tester there too. You can see it work sparking anyway. Still ninety. I need a couple more turns and call it. A little past 90. Just shy of 100. So let's uh, call it there at that. We know our coil's working, so that's handy. Let me 
me show you a trick. Bray some lubricants into the cylinder. Rotate this around a little bit to get it all in there. And then try your compression again. So two pulls and we're now at the same spot we were. And we are pretty much at 120. So you'll see sometimes people listing a compression results for their engine, um, which is usually a little higher than you usually see. And I, I always think they uh, oil up the cylinders first. Who's calling? Scott, what can I do for you? So as I saying? Yeah, who cares? Anyway, so we got compression, we got spark. It'll run. Uh, we'll need to clean up the carburetor just for safe measure. And we'll go check on the uh, lower to see if it's liquid cooled. I'm sure it is. And we'll see what a uh, impeller costs. And we'll go see about our uh, rope start parts. So, nothing to it. Also, just so you know. There is no provisions here should you not want an internal fuel tank and you want to use an external. There's no little little plug for a uh, fuel pump on either side. So, something to keep in mind. Some people like the built-in tank, some people don't. If you got a small canoe that you're putting this on and limited on room, you probably don't want the built-in tank. But, as you can see here, no provisions for it. So, keep that in mind. Alright, now I'm going to take the carburetor off. Let's make sure nothing weird's going on inside of there. So the thing needs to be cleaned. There's no doubt about that. The thing looks nasty. But in a second here we'll find out what the inside looks like. pretty well on there, <clears throat> so that's cool. Um, float looks okay. We got a, some oily, gassy stuff puddling inside of there. I'm not going to buy a carburetor rebuild kit should I decide to finish, fix this engine. I'll just clean it up. That, that looks fine. The new gasket float. Little bottom sealer here looks okay. Um, I didn't pull any of this part, but usually usually they're okay if it looked like that. All right, I'm going to drain the lower fluid here, kind of, see how it looks. Oh, that is on there. Wasn't expecting that one. Sometimes you'll see me do some pretty, uh, pretty dumb things. Right now is one of those times. But it worked. Fluid's a little milky. No biggie. Let's give this a rotate. We'll tilt it up a little bit. So not the worst I've ever seen. Anyway, I'll let it drain, drain out now. Now judging by the oil, pretty sure the lower unit's leaking somewhere. But I'm going to hook it up to my... Uh, gear case pressure tester here just to be sure which camera's in the way so let's get you out of there here's a full picture of what the pressure tester looks like now in theory you just kind of wait for it to leak out Well, it ain't leaking, and I uh, don't have the uh, vacuum test type of uh, pump. So, water was, or the oil was milky, oldish, but seems like it's holding now, so. I'm supposed to get it to about 15, see where it goes. 
It's holding 20. Eh, probably fine. So let's not rebuild the lower unit. We will eventually, don't get me wrong, but not anytime soon. Some oil. Should be good to go there. Alright, to add to the mess on my bench here, I'm going to pull this flywheel off and see what our coil looks like. That coil looks perfectly fine, I'd say. The wire is uh, needs to get changed, don't get me wrong. That's that's a pretty good looking coil. That thing looks new. Honestly, that thing looks brand new. Everything under here does. That's a little scary. Why, uh, why did this thing wind up in my junkyard, given how this thing looks? Maybe somebody had some problems with it, put the coil and the ignition points on it, hoping it would run better. Didn't. They said, screw it, junk it. I don't know. Who cares? Not, not who cares, but that's, I don't know. It's weird. All right, well, let's figure out the year of this thing and see what parts are going to cost us. All right, I have the uh, model number reference guide opened up here. So we have a... JC0CEB. So we have a Johnson zero horsepower apparently. CE, so it's an 89. I'll run suffixes B. So we have an 89 zero horsepower. Perfect. All right, I have a, a book here that shows me parts. Now, granted, it's quite old, but I'm just kind of curious what this thing would cost us. Carb kit's not bad, 18 bucks. Someday we might get that. Uh, let's check the water pump. If this thing works at all, I'm definitely changing that out. Uh, the impeller alone is 1831. That's kind of a lot, I think, for that little tiny impeller. And let's check out what a pump kit cost us. $42. That stupid little thing is $42. Now, these things ain't cheap, are they? Well, anyway, let's get a look at the stuff we actually need. Spring is 17 bucks. Pretty good. Also, I'm typing in the parts list for a comparison here. I'll show you why in a second. Now, I could just go down to the parts store and buy the spark plug, but it's probably going to be more than two bucks anyway, and I don't have to drive there if I do it this way. Um, let's go to Marine Engine. Mind you, I just copy all of the uh, parts I actually need over so we can see what the price difference is. Uh, so our water pump kit from Boats.net was 42 This is 52 so they're dreaming on that one. Let's see what the uh, starter spring is going to cost us. 1761 and 8 well, Sierra version is 1703 I don't know why I'd buy a Sierra version for $0.50 cents less when I get the Evanard. But the avenue route from here is 1851, 1761 over there, so 90 cents ish difference. And let's see what the spark plug costs. Three bucks here. They're tripping. All right, well, I think we're going to be ordering it from boats.net. So, here's the problem if you're awakening a dead sleeping outboard or an unknown outboard, such as I'm about to do with this thing, you really should change the water pump. So I'm going to pull lower unit off, and I'm going to check the impeller, see what it looks like, before I spend any money fixing this thing. And, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm incredibly lazy, and I use this impact wrench for everything. We need to regrease the splines, that's just nasty. Any longer, anything probably was seized in there. Now, I can buy a uh, water pump for a, you know, 115 horsepower for 50 bucks. Why is that tiny little thing 50 bucks? Or 42? 
Yeah, whatever. Rubber's pliable, not too bad. Well, let's uh, let's get the pump off and have a look. All right, I got the lower unit mounted in the holding fixture. Now, I did this because it's hilarious. This thing is tiny. No reason to be in this huge holding fixture. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I could have just thrown this on the bench and it probably would have been easier. Alright, this, this is taking too long already. Pretty nasty looking inside of there already. Not really surprising. There's our seal and plate. Kind of. I know I'm going to break this getting out of here. Alright, what I did to get that out of part, let me zoom up a little bit. So I got a screwdriver and I put it into the back side. And then I just tapped this bottom plate and pushed every, all the parts out of there. In case you're uh, curious. And I'm not putting it back in. So, here's our cup. No real grooves or anything. Cup's probably fine. The impeller, it uh, it's a little bent. Does it need to be changed? No. Should it be? Absolutely. So we don't have to do this impeller. Really, it's fine. At least for now. It won't be long term. But I don't know. Just kind of looking at it, it looks just old and deteriorated probably time to do. Since I don't want to have to take this thing apart again and do it, probably just go ahead and go for it. Uh, we do have a lot of cleaning to do under here though. You can see this thing was obviously used in salt water, but at this point we don't, I haven't run into any uh, corrosion or seized issues. So yeah, we'll move ahead. All right, I also realized I should probably want this nut and for $2 it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to get a little bit more spark plug wire because I don't have any. I'm going to get some engine tuner. Um, the reason I'm doing that, when I put oil in it, compression numbers went up. So there's probably some soot in there. It's a good idea to do. Um, and some miscellaneous other parts. So let's get started here. We're not going to get a carb kit. Ours is probably fine. We are going to buy a water pump kit. I don't want to, but I am. So let's go ahead and add one of these. Yeah, my internet's not that great, and realistically, who wants to sit here and watch me do this? But it's all part of the outboard world, isn't it? Alright, we need a new starter spring. 17 bucks, not horrible, not great. Now we're getting expensive already. Let's get our spark plug. All right, so far we're at sixty-one dollars for this little motor. Not a big deal. All right, engine tuner can ten bucks. Yeah, now we're getting kind of expensive, but uh, whatever. I'll use it for something else anyway. Now, what is this? So carbon chill cleaner. Uh, locally, it's six bucks. I've heard about it's eight. Eh, need a bigger can from the parts store, so we'll just do that. Uh, this is the screw, 92 cents. That beats trying to find one. That's not going to exactly break the bank, so to speak. Let's get the ignition wire now. I don't have any more. I only need a foot of it. So that's uh, worth the investment, I think. All right. $75. Not horrible. Now. I want you to keep something in mind. This is the bare minimum. Realistically, I could put another $30, $40 into this thing for the lower unit, another $20 for the carb kit, and then we'd be styling. But then we're over 100 and some change. Now, I want you to keep something in mind. That's a brand new Evinrude 3.5 force, which is the smallest they make, and this is a four stroke. Brand new is $1,000. So let's say you needed some more serious parts, like, I don't know drive shaft maybe or a prop shaft for $200 and then you know a uh, 
and in gear for another 65 plus the uh, three or four hundred dollars to rebuild one of these things when you can get a newer better one for thousand dollars that is something to keep in mind and also the other neat part about this is it's got a twist grip throttle so that's kind of neat so just keep that in mind when you're rebuilding an engine this small new they're pretty cheap so anyway, that's going to be our total, 7543 plus whatever shipping cost to go through this engine, kind of, and get it, you know, decently running, hopefully. Uh, hopefully it doesn't have a bad rod or something and need more work because that ain't something I'm about to do. I really don't even want to spend the 75, but, you know, whatever. So anyway, hope you found this video helpful. I'm going to order this now. Parts get here, I'll uh, make another video of putting it all together, and we'll, we'll see how it runs. So, stay tuned.